Hello once again, everybody. Welcome back to Miss Valley Entertainment News. My name is Dredd. We're going to cover a video here, and I'm going to call my video, Norwegian Company Creates Antifa Simulator Using Government Funds and Asset Flips. Now, let's look at Dustborn. This is a video by Smash JT we're going to react to. Done a lot of him lately, but damn it, Smash is so good at what he does. Uh, his video is called Dustborn Asset Flips Exposed. Original video link down below. Give us a like as we go. I have watched uh, most of this, I do believe, already. It's been a, been a, been about a week ago because it's a seven-day-old video. But uh, let's jump into it, and I'll give you my reactions to it. And let's go. Dustborn just can't seem to catch a break. They are the quintessential definition of a dude stepping on a rake and whacking himself in the face everywhere he turns. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Smash J. Reminds me of the game Loser Simulator that I play live on my Miss Valley Gaming channel. You can go check out out. Check out Miss Valley Gaming in the link comment uh, description down below. And if you click on my live videos, you will see I actually played Loser Simulator. And there is an attic full of rakes you have to walk across to get to something. And yes, those rakes do kill you. JT and between Red Thread Games, the developer, and the publisher of it, Quantic Dream, where they're all issuing these statements and supporting each other and blaming you, the customer, and at the end of the day, of course they do. it all goes back on them, and they're not willing to take any accountability for their actions, so they just end up blaming the community. So more people start digging, and more people start finding more information about what's going on with this company. What is Dustborn? Why are they being tax funded by the EU and yeah. America and yeah. other places where they're getting all this money from instead of where it should be coming from? The people playing the game, the uh -huh. consumer, the people that want to purchase a product from you. And because the epicenter of how this game got created in the first place started, it shows a lack of passion, a lack of effort, a game that seems to exist just to push a political agenda. Propaganda for Antifa, some have even called it. Thank you. It's the Antifa Recruitment Simulator disguised as a game. Obviously, due to my title, you'll know I agree with that. This is not a game. This is a propaganda film aimed at youth. I have a video on that already, but we'll move on. But at the end of the day, what Dustborn has turned into is the laziest asset flip in the modern era of in this case, I guess double A gaming. Smash JT. Hit that subscribe, give me a like, and check out smashjt.com for the full article talking about how Dustborn is the laziest asset flip of a game that I have seen in modern times. At least coming from a supposed professional organization. Because this is why I don't follow many professional studios nowadays. Uh, if you check out my Miss Valley Gaming channel, you'll find I play a lot of single A titles. I play a lot of titles by solo developers. I enjoy those games with their bugs and warts and issues a hell of a lot more than I enjoy anything the big companies put out, with the exception of an occasional Cyberpunk, Witcher, you know, Baldur's Gate 3, you know, those type of games that come down the pipeline here and there. You know, if I played them, I did play a little bit of Elden Ring, so I could I could include that one in there, although I was horrible at that and I didn't get in, get very far into it. Um, you know, with the Black Myth Wukong type games come along and they're great games. But it seems like they're few and far between. It seems like there's more duds from big companies and more tone deaf, not listening to the consumer things. At least with the solo the single developers, most of the time they're looking for your feedback and they're changing the game based on it. That's what gamers want. This game is anything but that. Red Thread Games, the developer of Dustborn, continues to spiral deeper into controversy as more information of the game's creation keeps coming to light. Initially, the game piqued some mild interest due to the unique narrative premise, as one of those just kind of want to know how bad it is kind of games, like people were curious. But it's as bad. more information has come to light, it reveals a far lazier, almost comically disastrous side of game development. But before I even get into that, let's jump back to the previous coverage on this where I talked about how Hayslick, that's me, posted to Twitter, how they found some conspicuous photos of why these apartments looked exactly like the apartments 
in Grand Theft Auto V, and they were oh. like, hey, that's kind of weird, kind of interesting. They were almost wondering if they were ripped straight from Grand Theft Auto V without authorization from Take-Two, and if they were just stealing it one for one. Turns out that's not what was happening. But what sort was of. happening is honestly almost as bad. The assets weren't technically stolen. It's been discovered that the apartment layout in question was purchased from an artist known as Oriordaz. But here's the kicker. Oriordaz openly admitted that their design was just using GTA 5 as a reference. So, you know, oh, I drew or created all the shapes, figures, uh, you know, models and things for this apartment but I did it while looking at GTA 5's apartments and just basically copied them, except I had to actually program it. It's not outright theft, but it's kind of intellectual property theft at the same time. Now, by Dustborn, but they, because they legally purchased from this other person who did something very immoral. And legitimately looks like they just ripped it one for one. So what this artist did was look at Grand Theft Auto V, look at the apartments and say, okay, I love that layout. I'm going to reference that and create my own model. And then I will sell it based off of what I see here to make sure it looks like an apartment should look. I'm going to rip it straight from Grand Theft Auto V, which wow. is fine. That happens in gaming. People borrow things all the time and use things for inspiration. I'm not going to knock that. But the fact that the Dustborn developer, Thea Berg, was so on the offensive against people daring to... I love that they think they have any hand to play in the situation at all. No, F you. I'm not going to be nice to you when you're being a dick to me. Cry about it, I guess. Huh. Question this raised a lot more eyebrows than they probably would have liked. The apartment layout in Dustborn was not an original creation or even a unique asset. It was a secondhand copy borrowing directly from the iconic Grand Theft Auto V. And while utilizing third-party assets is definitely not uncommon in game development, especially for indie studios on tight budgets, what makes this situation so insane is how Red Thread Games attempted to cover their tracks and how they cut corners while taking government funding and tax dollars to fuel the game yeah. that they were clearly in over their head with. Yep. And they didn't want people to find out about it. So instead, they started lashing out at you. And the It's because they're not really gamers and they're not really game designers. They're muddling their way through. They are activists with a script. They sold it to different governments to get money from them. Because the government said, yes, we want you to push this script on people. Fucking disgusting, man. Fucking disgusting. The entire gaming community at large, they didn't want anyone asking any questions. And as I spoke about in my previous video covering this, Thea Berg, one of the developers, tweeted what seemed like embarrassment out there, perhaps rightfully so. Her approach only highlighted how the studio cut corners during development, but it also pointed to a fundamental lack of experience and competence in handling a project's demand, aka they bit off way more than they could chew. They were in over their heads and they were trying their best to pretend they knew what they were doing when making a video game because they had so much money given to them. Most of which they probably pocketed. That's what activists usually do. They had to produce something. And sure, you could hear that and be like, okay, yeah, whatever. It happens in game design. They purchased this asset from a guy who ripped it from Grand Theft Auto V. And okay, maybe they didn't know about that. And they were just trying to cut corners. And sure. they seem we like they that. were knowing what they were doing. And okay. We'll let that slide. Sure. And then it comes to light that more stuff was ripped. And this thing is so embarrassing. I don't even know where to start with it. Look, the... Those are the towers. What the hell? You call them and this is supposed to be a dystopian future? As if the Grand Theft Auto V copy-paste job wasn't bad enough, another discovery has emerged thanks to Path of Radiance 2 that seemingly defies all logic. There's something odd in the game's background. What do you notice when you look at this picture? Huh. Yeah, those are the Twin Towers. The World Trade Center is Oopsie. still standing. Has to make you wonder, 
the game's developers had purchased and used assets so old that they potentially predate 9-11, 2001. We're in 2024 right now. How does that happen? Think about this know. for a second. The game released in know. the modern era, using assets from a time before one of the most defining moments in history. The laziness and lack of diligence even on notice. display here are beyond embarrassing. Red Thread Games didn't even bother to ensure that their assets they purchased were even up to date. Like His assets were probably made by somebody, probably not 23 or more years ago, but probably made by somebody who's not American, maybe, and just just recreated the skyline. Honestly. So they don't know any better. The devs don't know any better. It is pretty embarrassing. Let alone relevant or of sufficient quality for a modern game. They just literally ripped a background from something that they most likely purchased because, God, I hope they didn't create this on their own yeah. accidentally because that would mean they're even more out of touch than we gave them credit for. He purchased a generic background of New York, not even noticing that the Twin Towers were still there. And yeah, I get it. There are some people that are saying, oh, it's not that big of a deal. Like, whatever. It, is. They it really made is. They made a slight mistake. And I'm like, no, hold up. First off, that is so anti-American, it's not even funny. Like, that's one of the most defining things that's ever happened in the country in our lifetime. And I'm not even American, and I know that. And we're supposed to just be like, oh, well, they made a slight mistake by just Oops. using a background from before 2001, and they didn't notice. Like, this is one of the things that comes out of having a studio in Norway, not America, make a game about America trying to be an Antifa simulator to indoctrinate people to be anti-government. Thank you. Thank you, Smash GT. With that, my video is over. No, I'm kidding, but he just... He just summed it up. And now, first of all, let me quite clearly say this. Norway is a lovely country. I know gamers from Norway. My brother-in-law was in the Canadian military. He's now retired. He visited Norway many, many times with the military. Spoke very, very highly about Norway and the people. I think it's a wonderful, wonderful place. Nothing against the company being set in Norway. But they're saying it's a place far removed from America doing a game set in America. These types of mistakes are more likely to happen because of that. But can we just back up and listen to the sentence he spouts once again? They made a slight mistake by just using a background from before 2001 and they didn't notice. Like, this is one of the things that comes out of having a studio in Norway, not America, make a game about America trying to be an Antifa simulator to indoctrinate people to be anti-government. Did you get that? We're going to play it again because that's an important sentence. Listen to it. Listen to it and then understand the EU government and the American government gave money to them to make this game. I'd be surprised if Canada didn't give them money too, and I'm Canadian. I, I'd be surprised because Canadian politics are dicks right now. Notice, like, this is one of the things that comes out of having a studio in Norway, not America, make a game about America trying to be an Antifa simulator to indoctrinate people to be anti-government. You're saying, Dredd, why would a government want to indoct indoctrinate people into being anti-government? Because pitting people against each other is a great way for our government to distract people while it siphons off more money. And that happens in every effing country in the world, and you know it. Every country. That is one of the biggest issues coming out of all of this. And we're supposed to just be like, ah, 
whatever, they made a slight mistake because they're not from here. With all the info coming to light, Red Thread Games and their publisher Quantic Dream are now scrambling and failing massively with everything else they do, of course, to control the narrative. They're trying their best to tell you you're the problem and that they're just trying to make a game and they're just doing what everyone else did, when in reality, no, they straight up stole tax money put what they would call a game out there and are complaining to the community for you not purchasing it, which is one of the most embarrassing, ridiculous attacks on the gaming community I've seen in recent memory. And there's so many attacks on the gaming community right now for this to be leading? Really says something, and I completely agree with Smash JT on this one. Um, this is an affront to everything I hold near and dear. Everything. That is a terrible, terrible place to, to pause this. Can, can, can we, can we, look at, look at Smash's face right there. I, I can't, I, because of my green screen, I can't get close enough. Look at his face. I don't know what he's doing there, but it looks terrible. I apologize, Smash. Moment of humor. Amidst my anger at this game and at the governments who funded it, the people who worked on it, the studios who put it out, and the wacko games journalists who support it. I feel very, very strongly about this game. Check out my other video on it. I think I've only got one, maybe two on it. I don't remember. But check out my other video or videos on Dustborn. I have a lot to say about this epic game. This thing is a masterpiece a masterpiece in how to tear a society apart it has to make you wonder why they're not just owning this and taking the l instead of taking accountability for what has increasingly become what looks like a money grabbing scheme the developers seem more focused on defending their decisions with paper than excuses but at its core the entire debacle reflects a much deeper problem the misuse of public funding for a project built on laziness, shortcuts, and an astonishing lack of creativity or accountability. Red Thread Games' lack of transparency, their reliance on outdated assets, and their attempts to pass off a poorly cobbled together project as something more substantial has resulted in what might be considered the laziest double A asset flip of a game in recent memory. It's embarrassing, it's pathetic, and yeah, this is valid criticism. I am not attacking your developers. I'm not attacking the publisher. I'm calling it like I see it, which is something you will try your best to twist into attacks and how this valid criticism is me just coming at you because I'm an evil gamer, when in reality, you cannot be accountable for your own actions. And that's exactly why you're hiding from people right now. You're shutting off replies. You're not letting people voice their concerns yep. or opinions you want your echo chamber and you want to blame gamers Reach but it, I and many Reach other it. people out there are just not having it and you guys look even worse with how you're doubling and tripling down on your side of things instead of just owning up to what amounts to a lazy asset flip that ends up stealing government funds i'm gonna there's no there's no accountability because there's no there's no morality they have no effing morals they have no effing morals at all they will sell their children for a dollar. They have no morals. I'll leave it there. If you guys want more. Original video will be linked down below. This game pisses me off. It's not even a game. It just pisses me off. And if you want to know more about Smash JT, I can tell you he's got people hot under the collar where they are literally trying to cancel his channel right now. They're uh, they're they're leveraging YouTube into putting strikes against his channel. He has no recourse. He's having to sue back other people. Uh, sorry, he's having to sue people who are coming at him. He is he is getting attacked because he is the voice of gamers right now. Smash JT, I salute you, sir. Keep up, good work. You're in our thoughts and prayers. Let's go, everybody from Miss Valley Entertainment News. My name is Dread. That is my thoughts on this. Fucking debacle. This fucking piece of steaming shit that they call a game. 
everybody catch you later thanks for your uh, thanks for your time bye bye